to the leap from college or Europe or wherever you're, you're coming from now to the NBA. And uh, the only way I can stress that is uh, there's 500 NBA jobs and there's billions of people on this planet. So you can do the math of what the odds of becoming an NBA player are. So, you know, if anybody is in this league on a roster, they're, they're, they're a good player. Uh, but, uh, you know, as I look at the three players, we have three first-round picks. And, you know, realistically, you say, well, you hope you hit on one, you hope you hit on two. Uh, I really believe we've, we've got hit on all three. Now, <laughs> uh, obviously, I'm basing it on a small sample size, but I've also been doing this enough years to watch how people come into the league. And uh, the moment's not too big for any of these. Again, these are 19 and 20-year-olds, which kind of blows me away. But you know, Alex Sarr, a lot was made about the summer league. Oh, he was 0 for 13. And as Brian Keith pointed out, we well, took 13 shots. Well, <laughs> nobody ever remembers what anybody does in summer league. I can tell you what he's done so far in preseason. Uh, he's shown the, and again, we're in this versatile NBA league where, you know, seven footers are no longer seven footers like the seven footers that were even the, the 80s or 90s. So, you know, he's versatile. Bub Carrington. I can't believe he's 19, but the way he has attacked the game so far, uh, it just blows me away. Kishon George, I don't think anybody was talking about, and uh, I don't, I, you know, he he looks like he belongs already. So, you know, this you throw on to Bilal Kulabali going into his second season. You know, this is what it's about when you're trying to build a, a sustainable team for the future, and you look around teams that have done it. You start with young talent that plays together, and and y- y- you hope they rise, uh, and and then two or three years down the road, you you are a contender, and that's that's what the the Wizards' goal is. Uh, everyone would like that to happen uh, quicker, but that's not the way it works in the NBA. It's not like the NFL where you have a bad season, you can fire the whole team or <laughs> start over. Or, uh, the, the NBA is much harder, or much slower process to turn things around. But the Wizards, you know, made a commitment to do that uh, beginning last year. And, you know, here we go with the second season of that commitment. Speaking of that kind of transition to the rebuild that began last year, the key pieces returning uh, this year within that rebuild, how, how much have you seen them grow during uh, the preseason? Well, I mean, Kulabali literally has grown. And this is, uh, again, when you know, you're talking about you know, players are uh, 19 or uh, their bodies are uh, in some cases have not been completed growing. Um, you know, he's coming off an Olympic year, uh, you know, with, with France. It, it, it's, uh, you know, he's getting, and we were talking about this during the broadcast. And we'll talk about it tonight. You know, he often, he gets the toughest, you know, assignment defensively in a game. He is that versatile. He can guard four positions. Um, and so, and he did that last year. So, uh, you know, wow, what kind of um, uh, opportunity is that for a Bilal Kulavali? Where, you know, you, and this is why this the team. This is a team of opportunity. If you get drafted by the Wizards or you come to the Wizards, you're going to get a chance um, to elevate your game to, because you're going to get a chance to play. And it's why, quite frankly, the, the veterans we have. Uh, want to be here. Uh, both Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole have won NBA titles as role players, if you will. Well, now they, they want to be in a situation, and they are in a situation, where uh, they're, more, they're the leaders. And, and um, uh, you, know, they, uh, you know, for lack of a better way of saying it, uh, you know, being a role player on an NBA title team, they've been there and done that. Now they want to be the ones out front and driving the bus or whatever cliche you want to use. And, and we're, we're seeing that, uh, you know, they want to be here and maybe the biggest uh, endorsement I heard this off season was, you know, you know, Alan Shunas. He's a 17 year vet who uh, had his pick of NBA teams just because he's such a, a good solid guy and you can use him in so many ways and uh, defensively. Uh, and, and he said the words getting around that he wanted to come to Washington because of, you know, what Michael Winger and Will Dawkins are, are uh, doing with the organization. So uh, that's also part of the NBA equation is, uh, in like all leagues, players talk, and there's, there's, uh, there's a recruiting. So you want to be 
in a situation where you draft well, but also when it comes time to add some free agents or, or get involved in that market, it's not only just money that talks, it's also what kind of organization, what kind of system uh, and structure do you have for the players? Dave, another thing that's big this season is it will be Brian Keith's first full season as the head coach after taking over from Wes Unseld Jr. last year. So what does he bring, and and what are some of the differences, and what can Wizards fans expect out of the, uh, I guess, schemes and how they'll play this year? Well, just, you know, it's it's not, you know, it's one of those situations where, uh, you know, Wes was in a, in a, a situation where he was suddenly part of a rebuild, which was not quite frankly what he was originally hired for. Uh, you know, what Brian Keith, you know, he's a teacher first. And it, this is a, I said this team is going to be fun. They're going to get after it. But if Brian Keith sees something he doesn't like with 30 seconds into the game, he's going to call timeout. And he has. If he sees something he doesn't like 30 seconds left in the quarter, which typically you don't call a timeout. He's going to call a timeout because he wants to correct it at that moment. So, uh, yeah, what, this is a uh, this is a lot of hard work. And Brian Keith is excited about this because he's he you know came from this uh, originally from the San Antonio Spurs organization, who, who by the way has a track record of going from the bottom to the top, um, and he knows the hard work that goes into that. And and. It, it, you know, it's not just the games. That's the that's the part we'll focus on. That's the part I'll broadcast. I don't broadcast practices, um, but you know how this team moves forward and how any organization gets great. And it's an overused term about culture and creating a culture, but um, there's no magic to that. What what it's hard work. It's it's day to day structure and habits that everybody buys into, and that that creates your culture. So that's. You know that's what Brian Keith is is all about. Is is it, it, you want to teach and grow these young players, but you have to hold them accountable. And so there's they're going to make mistakes, uh, but that means when you make mistakes, they're held accountable, and and you have to correct those mistakes. So uh, you know everybody who comes in this league, as I, I mentioned, uh, I don't care how good you were in college, or I don't care if you were LeBron. I remember LeBron in his rookie year. For goodness sakes, nobody comes in. Um, where they got this. This league is that competitive and that, that hard. And, and Brian Keith is helping these young players get into a position where where one day we're going to be talking about just how consistent they are. That's the goal. What are other signs, I guess, or hopes to, or more so, I guess, the vision, I guess, is probably the better way to say it in your mind to truly see that this rebuilding process is progressing in a positive direction this year? Well, I think you're, you know, you're going to, it's not going to be about wins and losses because you don't win in this league playing uh, a lineup of, of, you know, essentially 19 and 20 year olds. Um, If that's, you know, that's part of the, uh, but look, you know, there's analogies in other sports. Uh, I mean, I'm not, we're close to the Orioles here and, and for a while, they weren't so good, and now they're contenders unless they get the Kansas City Royals, it seems, in the postseason. But um, what uh, it's that consistency. What, what you're gonna, when you start to see uh, the Alex Stars, the Bilal Kulabalis, uh, Bob Carrington, uh, you know, wow, they're, they're doing this on a consistent basis. You know, we're seeing that with Corey Kispert. Uh, you know, now as he enters uh, veteran status, and he's still a, a baby in this league. So... Um, uh, you know, we saw it last year, quite frankly, where you know the, what what these players and, and this team was was more competitive down the stretch, and and I think we're going to look for the same again this year. But it's it's you know if this team wins twenty five games it, it, it versus fifteen, or uh, it's it's not going to be judged, and that's not what they're judging it on wins losses. Actually, it's it's a very um, in depth. Uh, you know, metric that they use for each player, metrics, uh, which is a hot word. Um, but I was talking to uh, Mike Mascala last year, and he was saying he'd never seen the amount of detail given to each player. And they players at this level want to be challenged. They didn't reach the NBA because they coasted. Um, and he said, you know, he'd never seen a situation where he had so many uh 
points where he was going to be judged, but then that gave him clarity. Uh, okay, you know, uh, this is what I've got to do. And I, I think it's, again, like anybody else's job, you, you know, you do better when you, uh, you know, your, your boss or your manager makes it clear, you know, I want you to do these 10 things and we're going to judge you on these 10 things. And then that, that, that gives you, uh, the incentive to go out and accomplish that and, and succeed. So, um, it's, it's really a process where you, you, you look for wow moments. Wow. I hadn't seen below cool. And we had it last year with cool Well, you know, this year we're going to have Bob Carrington. I didn't see that before. Um, and, and that's, what's going to unveil before our eyes and ears because we're on radio. Dave, the uh, Wizards yesterday or a couple days ago uh, re-signed Corey Kispert to an extension. So uh, you mentioned him just, you know, heading into I guess it's his fourth season now. Uh, what are some expectations with that extension, and and what do you think that says about what uh, the Wizards think of his career so far? Well, they they think that he's he's a valuable player, uh, just like they you know quite frankly they thought. The same as Denny Avdia, and Denny Avdia went out and had the best uh, a year of his career last year, but he ended up getting traded. Uh, and I bring that up because this is where we are in the process. Um, uh, you know, maybe Corey Kispert's with us for his whole career for a long time, or maybe not. The point being is Corey Kispert earned that contract extension because uh, you know if he's he's either going to be a part of the Wizards' future. But again, it depends on how things shake out, and he knows that. Or because he's so valuable, you want to have him on a four-year contract in case you want to trade him. Because you know what, other teams are going to want him. I mean, I mean, here's the guy who's you know we know about his offense. He, he's he's getting better and working hard defensively. But offensively, you know, <laughs> he he's not just a catch and shoot three pointer, but he's so good at three pointers. Uh, you have to respect that, and because of that. Uh, you know, if, if somebody tries to run off the three point line, he's attacking the basket and he's getting better at finishing around the rim. So, uh, you know, this is, he, he's coming off his best year and, and that's why you're in the contract. Does that mean that, you know, he's part of the Wizards long term future? Uh, not necessarily because when you're only into the, not even into the second year of the rebuild, we've, we've had <laughs> one year. We haven't even started the second season of it. Um, you don't know how it's going to shake out, but it's only going to get better and, and continue to go in the right direction if you have players like Corey Kispert that are earning contracts. If, if and if you have a you know collection of players that you know it just doesn't seem to be getting better, and you can point to teams. I mean, you know, Detroit. And this is why when you decide to to build, rebuild, and start over. You know, people say, well, you're trying to lose. No, you're not trying to lose. You're trying to develop players. And in the, in the process, um, you might not win as many games as we want when you're a playoff team or you need to do when you're a playoff team. But it doesn't guarantee you success. So that's why it's encouraging, you know, Detroit's having to rebuild again. Uh, they, you know, they just got rid of a coach and they had signed to a five-year contract or something like that. So it, it's a tough it's a tough league to, to uh, rebuild because, uh, you know, when teams do get a solid core, like Boston, who we play tonight, uh, it's tough to knock them off their perch. But, you know, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, but it's, it's a long, longer-term process. But when you have exciting players uh, to build around, uh, that gives you hope for the future. We're joined by Dave Johnson, radio voice of the Washington Wizards as the regular season begins for the Wizards tonight, as you just heard from Dave against the Boston Celtics. What's your kind of insight about this home opener for Washington tonight against the defending champions? Well, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of energy in the building. There, there's, you know, it's the Celtics are in town, and that's always a way. I mean, the Celtics are, are one of the marquee franchises in the NBA, you know, like the Lakers, like the Knicks. And, but especially, you know, even more so the Celtics and Lakers because of their success. They'll also, you know, needless to say, we're in Washington, D.C., where we have people from all over the country living. So there's, there's going to be some Celtics green there tonight. So the, the energy is going to be alive. 
in the building. But I, I think, you know, we, we had our biggest preseason game uh, attendance-wise since uh, 2018, I think they told me. Um, I, I think fans are, are – are, you want to see – now in a regular season environment, we've we've you know we had five preseason games. You witnessed some of Alex Star, some of Bob Carrington, but this but there's nothing like for real in any sport, and that's that's I think why there's going to be electricity in the air. And you know <laughs> why not start against the defending champions? I mean that's uh, not it, it's not going to be a measuring stick uh, by any stretch, but. Um, you know, they're certainly going to bring it and they always bring it. And, uh, and you know, that's just it. I mean, when you're a team, a young team like the wizards, nobody's going to want to lose to us. And, but I keep referring to last year, our game against the Lakers and why this team is fun and competitive. Um, the Lakers final minute of the game, uh, you know, they thought they had it won, so they put Anthony Davis, LeBron James on the bench, and everybody's on the bench. And next thing you know, the Wizards, who also took out their starters, are, are coming back. And it's like a five-point game with 30 seconds left, and Anthony Davis and LeBron James are tripping over themselves to get off the bench so they can come in and close this out. And they did. But the point being, and that's what you're going to hear listening to Wizards basketball, these guys are not going to give up. They're not going to because it, it's it. They want to be a part of the NBA long term, not just their rookie contracts. Or, because there's a lot of players that after two or three years, if they don't bring it, fade out of the league. And um, this is why you know I, I can't wait to get going tonight because it was a lot of fun last year. And I say that in all seriousness, even though there's only 15 wins. Dave, thank you for coming and joining us here tonight for the game, uh, or for the preview of the season, I should say, and uh, looking forward to Wizards basketball this year. Looking forward to it, and we've been together in Martinsburg for over 30 years, so uh, we're going to get you a title yet. (laughs) So, again, I appreciate people staying with us. Thank you, Dave. Dave Johnson, voice of the Washington Wizards, joining us on the show today. Wizards tip off the season tonight. I think our first airing of Wizards basketball will be uh, the Cavs game on Saturday. So we'll have Thursday night football tonight, or, or maybe it's it's a few games away because I guess we do have WVU probably on Saturday. But we'll have our fair share of Wizards basketball. Absolutely. As well as, of course, um, it might be the Hawks game on the 30th, I think, is actually the first yes, one. Yes, that is. So. This, this segment brought to you by Hagerstown Ford, revolutionizing the car buying experience by your next vehicle.